Hey everyone, Mr. Griffith here. And in this video, I'm going to show you some practice tips for uh, the piece Cripple Creek measures 21 to 24. So it's just a little four measure segment right there and then, and then it repeats again. But this is a little tricky spot because it requires a shift. So let me play it first so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like and then I'll kind of break it down on how you can practice this. So this is measure 21, Cripple Creek. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> So those are the four measures that I'm going to break down. In measure 21, the shift is the most important thing. So I'm going to show you some things that you can do to practice that. So you start off in third position. Your fourth finger is on the high D. So there it is. The next note that you play is an A. Now notice my hand is moving a really long distance, but really we're only moving from one hand position to another hand position. That's how I want you to think about it. So here we are, we're in third position, and you can even just practice this. Then you, sh you slide back to first position. And so start there, practice just doing this motion. And you'll get really comfortable with this pretty quick. Then what we can do is add in some note names. So we can go starting on the D, and then we're going to shift back, A, and then shift up, and then back. And you can... And so on and so forth, just so you get comfortable with that motion. Now, here's the critical part when you're shifting. I'm going to show you from the side what my thumb looks like. So when you shift, everything moves at the same time. Notice my thumb is moving exactly with my fingers. I'm not dragging it or I'm not starting with it straight up like this because if you notice... Once you, once you point your thumb straight up, your fingers automatically squish together. And so we don't want to squish our fingers together. We want to keep them nice and rounded and pointed exactly into the fingerboard. So that'll take care of that measure. And then it's just a matter of adding the other notes. The other critical part of this measure is when you go from the A to the F sharp. Now normally when you go from a first finger to a fourth finger on one string, your fingers are going to be this far apart. However, this far is really depends on how big your bass is and how big your hand is and so on and so forth. But if you're going from a first finger on the A to a fourth finger on the F sharp, you actually have to stretch your fingers out further than you think or further than on one string. And so you're almost going to have to think about when you're going from the A to the F sharp that you have to push your fourth finger closer to the bridge just by a little tiny bit. Now the other thing that's happening in this particular section is the slur. And so I want to show you what that looks like, kind of break down some things that you can do to help. So we're going to go all the way down there. Okay. So in measure 22, you have the first slur, and you're slurring from G to B, and then A. Now remember, anytime you slur, you're moving your bow in one direction for two or more notes. And so the slur between the G and the B is going to look like that. When I slur, I try to keep the same amount of bow for the first note as for the second note. That kind of evens out the sound. Now, if that's difficult for you to do at the start, Try practicing what's called a hooked bow. It's a different kind of a technique, but this kind of has the same idea. So you play the, the first note down, you pause, and then play the next note. 
So that way it gives you time to plant your finger down before you play the next one. Once you get comfortable with that motion, then you just add the smooth motion from uh, from uh, from the down bow uh, all the way to the tip of the bow. The next measure that you have a slur is measure 24. Same idea here, but you're playing an E to an open D. I think about that first note has about that much bow. The second note has about that much bow. And so however that much bow is kind of depends on the individual player too. But as long as you kind of even it out, you're going to have a nice even sound for each note. So that's it for this little segment of Cripple Creek. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and happy practicing.